for people curious to kind of learn more. So this is more like, this is not middle school. We're going to go to elementary school for a second. <laughs> Maybe middle school. Let's go to middle school. Uh, so if I were to try to maybe write a write a pamphlet of like Wolfram Physics Project for Dummies, aka for me, or maybe make a video on the basics, but not just the basics of the physics project, but the basics plus the most beautiful central ideas. Um, how would you go about doing that? Could you help me out a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, We've you know, as a, a, as a really it, practical matter, we have this kind of visual summary picture that we made. That's right. Um, which I think is a pretty good, you know, when I've tried to explain this to people, and, you know, it's a pretty good place to start. Is you've got this rule, you know, you apply the rule, you're building up this, this big hypergraph, um, you've got all these possibilities, you're kind of thinking about that in terms of quantum mechanics. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a decent place to start. So basically, the things we've talked about, which is space represented as a hypergraph, transformation of that space is kind of time, Yes, and then uh, structure give... of that space uh, and the curvature of that space as gravity. gravity. That's a, that can be explained without going anywhere near quantum mechanics. Um, I would and say then... that's actually easier to explain than special relativity. Um, oh, so going into general, so g g going to curvature. Yeah, I mean, special relativity. I, I think is it's a little bit elaborate to explain. Yeah, and honestly. You only care about it if you know about special relativity, if you know how special relativity is ordinarily derived and so on. So and general I think relativity is easier. It's easier, yes. And, and then what about quantum? What's the easiest way to reveal? Uh, I think the, the basic point is just this, mechanics. this fact that there are all these different branches, yep. that there's this kind of map of how the branches work, and that, um, I mean, I think... I think actually the recent things that we have about the double slit experiment are pretty good because you can actually see this, you can see how the double slit, you know, phenomenon arises from just features of these graphs. Now, you know, having said that, right, there is a little bit of, of sleight of hand there because the, the true story of the way that double slit thing works depends on the coordinatization of branchial space that... For example, in our internal team, there is still a, a vigorous battle going on about how that works. And it's, it's what's becoming clear is, I mean, what's becoming clear is that it's mathematically really quite interesting. I mean, it, that is that there's a, you know, it involves essentially putting space filling curves. You basically have a thing which is naturally two dimensional and you're sort of mapping it into one dimension and with a space filling curve. And it's like, why is it this space filling curve and not another space filling curve? And that becomes a story about Riemann surfaces and things. And it's quite elaborate. And, um, but, but the, there's a, a more or a little bit sleight of hand way of doing it where it's, you know, it's surprisingly direct. It's so a question. That might be difficult to answer, but uh, for several levels of people, could you give me advice on how we can learn more? Specifically, yeah. there is people that are completely outside and just curious and are captivated by the beauty of hypergraphs, actually. Uh -huh. So people that just want to explore, play around with this. Uh, second le level is people from, say, people like me, who somehow got a PhD in computer science, uh -huh. but are not physicists. And but fundamentally, the work you're doing is of computational nature, so it feels very accessible. Yes. So what are what can a person like that do to learn enough physics, or not, to be able to uh, one explore the beauty of it, and two, the the final level of contribute something. Right. Of a level of even publishable, right? You know, like right, right, right. strong, e interesting ideas. Right. So at all those layers, complete beginner, yeah, com right. I CS person and the CS person that wants to publish. Right. I mean, I think that you know, I've written a bunch of stuff. Uh, a person called Jonathan Gorod, who's been a key person working on this project, has also written a bunch of stuff, um, and some other people have started writing things too. And he's a physicist physicist well he's i would say a mathematical physicist. mathematical physicist he's pretty mathematically sophisticated he's he regularly out mathematicizes me yeah this strong yeah strong mathematical physicist yeah I, uh, I looked at some of the papers right but but so so i mean you know 
I wrote this kind of original announcement blog post about this project, which people seem to have found. Uh, I've been really happy, actually, that people um, who, uh, you know, uh, people seem to have grokked key points from that, mm -hmm. much deeper key points people seem to have grokked than I thought they would grok. Um, and, that, and that's a kind of a long blog post that explains some of the things we talked about, like the hypergraph and the basic rules. Yes, yes. And uh, I don't, does it, I forget, it doesn't have any quantum mechanics. Oh, yeah, any, yeah. It, it goes does. through quantum mechanics. Yes, okay. it does. Okay. But we, we know a little bit more since that blog post that uh, probably clarifies, but that blog post is, does a pretty decent okay. job. Um, and, you know, talking about things like, again, something we didn't mention, the fact that the uncertainty principle is a consequence of curvature in branchial space. How much physics should a person know to be able to understand the beauty of this framework and to contribute something novel? Okay, so I, th I think that, th that those are different questions. So, I mean, I think that the, why does this work? Why does this make any sense? Um, uh, to really know that, you have to know a fair amount of physics. Okay. Um, and for example, have a decent When you say, understand. why does this work? You're, you're referring to the connection between this model and- General relativity, for example. General relativity. Like you have to understand something about general relativity. There's, and that's a, there's also a side of this where just as the pure mathematical framework is fascinating. Yes. If you throw the physics out right. completely. Then it's quite accessible to, I mean, you know, I, I wrote this sort of long technical introduction to the project, which seems to have been very accessible to people who are, you know, who understand computation and, and formal abstract ideas, but are not specialists in physics or, or other kinds of things. I mean, the thing with the physics part of it is, you know, it's, there's both a way of thinking and a, literally a mathematical formalism. I mean, it's like, you know, to know that we get the Einstein equations, to know we get the energy momentum tensor, you kind of have to know what the energy momentum tensor is, and that's physics. I mean, that's kind of graduate level physics, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, so that, you know, making that final connection is, requires some depth of physics knowledge. I mean, that's the unfortunate thing, the difference between machine learning and physics in the 21st century. Is it uh, really out of reach of a year or two worth of study? No, you could get it in a year or two, but you can't get it in a, in a month. Right. I mean, so, it, but it doesn't require necessarily like 15 years. No, it does not. And, and in fact, a lot of what has happened with this project makes a lot of this stuff much more accessible. There are things where it has been quite difficult to explain what's going on, and it, it requires much more, you know, having the concreteness of being able to do simulations, knowing, knowing that this thing that you might have thought was just an analogy is really actually what's going on makes one feel much more secure about just sort of saying, this is how this works. Um, and I, I think it will be, you know, the, I'm hoping the textbooks of the future, the physics textbooks of the future, there will be a certain compression. There will be things that used to be very much more elaborate because, for example, even doing continuous mathematics versus this discrete mathematics, but, you know, to know how things work in continuous mathematics, you have to be talking about stuff and waving your hands about things. Whereas with discrete, the discrete version, it's just like, here is a picture. This is how it works. And there's no, oh, did we get the limit right? Did this, you know, did this thing that is of, you know, uh, zero, you know, measure zero object, you know, interact with this thing in the right way? You don't have to have that whole discussion. It's just like, here's a picture. You know, this is what it does. And, you know, you can, then it takes more effort to say, what does it do in the limit when the picture gets very big? But you can but do you can experiments least, to build up an intuition, actually. Yes, right. And you, you can get sort of core intuition for what's going on. Now, in terms of contributing to this, the, you know, I would say that the study of the computational universe and how all these programs work in the computational universe, there's just an unbelievable amount to do there. And it is very close to the surface. That is, you know, high school kids, you can do experiments. It's not... Um, you know, and you can discover things. I mean, you know, we, you can discover stuff about, I don't know, like this thing about expansion of branchial space. That's an absolutely accessible thing to look at. Now, you know, the main issue with doing these things is not, there isn't a lot of technical depth difficulty there. The actual doing of the experiments, you know, all the code is all on our website to do all these things. The real thing is sort of the judgment of what's the right experiment to do? How do you interpret what you see? That's the part that, you know, people will do amazing things with. 
and that's the part that but but it isn't like you have to have done 10 years of, of study to get to the point where you can do the experiments you don't that's it, it, a cool that, thing you can do experiments do. day one basically right it's that, right. that, and, that and, that's and, the amazing thing about and you've actually put the tools out there yep. as, as beautiful it's mysterious uh there's still i would say maybe you can correct me it feels like there's a huge number of low hanging fruit Oh, there on the, is on the mathematical side, at least not the oh, yeah. not the physics side, perhaps. No, no there's the, look on the on the okay on the physics side, we are we're definitely in harvesting mode, you know. <laughs> of which which fruit the low hanging ones or the, the low hanging. All right, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, basically, here's the thing. There's a certain list of you know here are the effects in quantum mechanics. Here are the effects in general relativity. It's just like industrial harvesting. It's like, <laughs> can we get this one, this yeah. one, this one, this one, this one? And and the thing that's really, you know, interesting and satisfying, and it's like, you know, is one climbing the right mountain? Does one have the right model? The thing that's just amazing is, you know, we keep on like, are we going to get this one? How hard is this one? It's like, oh, you know, it looks really hard. It looks really hard. Oh, actually, we can get it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you're you're continually surprised. I mean, it seems like I've been following your progress. It's kind of exciting. All the in harvesting mode, all the things you're picking up along right, the way. Right, right. No, I mean, it's it's the thing that is. I keep on thinking it's going to be more difficult than it is. Now that's a you know that's a who knows what. Um, I mean, the one thing. So the 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 um, the thing that's been a was a big thing that I think we're we're pretty close to. I mean, I can give you a little bit of the roadmap. It's sort of interesting to see. It's like, what are particles? What are things like electrons? How do they really Sorry. work? Um, are you close to get like what? What's uh? Are you close to trying to understand like the atom, the elect electrons, neutrons, protons? Like okay, so particles? this is this is the stack. So the first thing we want to ex understand is uh, the quantization of spin. So particles, they they kind of spin. They have a certain ang angular momentum. That angular momentum, even though the masses of particles are all over the place. You know, the electron has a mass of 0.511 MeV, the, but, you know, the proton is 938 MeV, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're all kind of random numbers. The, the spins of all these particles are either integers or half integers. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact that was discovered in the 1920s, I guess. Um, the, uh, uh, I think that we are close to understanding why spin is quantized. Um, and that's a, and it, it appears to be a quite elaborate mathematical story about homotopy groups in twister space and all kinds of things. But bottom line is that seems within reach. And that's a, that's a big deal because that's a very core feature of understanding how particles work in quantum mechanics. Another core feature is this difference between particles that obey the exclusion principle and sort of stay apart that leads to the stability of matter and things like that. And particles that love to get together and be in the same state, things like photons, that, um, and that's what leads to phenomena like lasers, um, where you can get sort of coherently everything in the same state. Mm -hmm. That difference is the particles of integer spin are bosons, like to get together in the same state, the particles of half integer spin of fermions, like electrons, that they tend to stay apart. And um, so the question is, can we can we get that in our models? 